Today I'm going to show you how to carry out a conflict-free IREX 6.5.30 installation on an SGI Tezra. To get things started, I'm going to enter the command monitor and I'm going to type in HINV. Okay, and I've done this in order to determine which unit the CD-ROM is, and in my machine it's unit 0 on SCSI controller 2. The IREX overlays 1 disk is in the CD-ROM drive, so I'm going to start off by booting FX in order to partition my hard drive. I boot into FX by typing boot minus F DKSC open bracket 2 for the SCSI controller which the CD-ROM drive sits on, 0 for the unit which is the CD-ROM drive, and 8 close bracket Sash 64 followed by DKC again open bracket 2 for the SCSI controller which the CD-ROM sits on 0 for the CD-ROM itself and 7 followed by stand fx dot 64 dash dash x and now fx starts to boot. Okay, so the device name is DKSC, the controller is 0, drive is 1, so now it's opening the drive self test. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to repartition the disk, so I'm going to choose the option R for repartition. Okay, I'm going to set it as a root drive, so I'm going to type in RO. Okay, it is an XFS system that I want to put on it, and I'll say yes to continue. Okay, and then from there, I'm going to go back to the menu that I was in before. So it's dot dot, and then I'm going to label the disk, and I'm going to sync it, which is S1. Okay, so the label has now been written to the disk, so I'm just going to exit FX, and it's EXI to exit. Okay, I'm now going to choose to install system software and I'm going to make use of the local CD-ROM. And there it starts to copy the installation tools to the system disk. Okay, now it's invoking the software installation. And this brings you to the main menu. Now that I'm in the main menu, I'm going to choose option 13 to go into admin. I want to make a new file system on the disk, so I'm going to choose option 11 in this menu. And it asks me if I'm sure that I want to clean my disks, so I say yes. Y for yes. And then it asks, do I want to make a new file system? I do, so I type in yes. And there it creates the new file system. And in order to get back to the main menu, I type in exit. And this brings me back to the main menu. In order to start the actual software installation, I'm going to hit 6 to install. And then it starts to read the disk that's in the CD-ROM. Okay, so there it reads the product descriptions. Okay, and it asks me, do I want to be put on a maintenance stream or a feature stream? I'm going to choose two for feature stream. And 
and there it wants the next disk. I now have the overlay is 2 disk for RX 6.5.30 in the CD-ROM. So it's just going to read this disk as well. So I press enter. Okay, okay, and what's rather important on this disk, although it doesn't give me the option here, it's important to read the unbundled section on the disk, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. It hasn't given me the unbundled folders and options, so I'm going to have to look for it. Okay, and then it starts to read the unbundled folder. It's very important to do this if you don't want to get any conflicts. Okay, it's now for time for the next disk. And in this case, I'm going to select 2 for CD-ROM disk. The overlays 3 disk is now in the drive, so I'm going to hit 2. And there we go, it's now time for the Foundation 1. The Foundation 1 disk is in the drive, so I just hit enter again. And this is then followed by Foundation 2. The Foundation 2 disk is now in the drive, so I hit enter again. And this is now followed by the Development Foundation. The Development Foundation disk is now in the drive, so I hit enter again. And it continues reading the product descriptions. And this is now followed by the Development Libraries. And as you can see, it's now changed to Distribution and then Distribution 6.5. The Development Libraries disk is now in the drive, so now I just hit enter. Okay, and it looks like it wants to read from the disk, so I'll hit 2 again. And there it goes. And continues reading from the disk. And this is then followed by the network filing system disk. I'll try one, but I'm sure this disk likes to be read from distribution 6.5, but I'll just try one first. Okay, it's reading the descriptions. Okay, and this is then followed by the applications disk for RX 6.5.30. The application CD is now in the drive, so I'm going to hit enter again. Okay, it doesn't want to read from distro 6.5, so I'm going to try number 2. And there it goes, spacebar. It's important to wait for the text to finish scrolling before you hit the spacebar each time. And there it starts reading the product descriptions. This is then followed by the complementary application CD. The complementary application CD is now in the drive, so I'm just going to hit enter again.
Again, be careful not to hit the space bar too quickly. Wait for the text to scroll. And there it reads the product descriptions again. Okay, I've now done reading all the disks, so I'm going to hit option 11. Now that I'm in the inst menu, there's a whole series of commands that I have to now type in order to get a conflict-free install. I've already typed in all the commands required in the inst menu in order to save some time, so I'm just going to go through them quickly. It's keep space dot asterisk, then it's install standard, then it's keep java2 underscore plugin dot sw32 dot mozilla underscore freeware, then it's keep inventor underscore dev dot sw dot base. Then it's keep inventor underscore dev dot sw dot lib. Then it's install eoe dot sw dot font tools. Then it's install eoe dot sw dot uucp. Then it's install eoe dot sw dot xlv. Then it's install eoe dot sw dot spell. Then it's install ftn underscore eoe. Then it's installed inventor underscore eoe dot sw64. Then it's install ifl underscore eoe dot sw64. Then it's install dmedia underscore eoe dot sw64. Then it's installed prereq and no matches for prereq were found, and that's pretty standard for this command. Then it's keep incomplete overlays. And then finally remove java underscore dev asterisk. And this is a very important command because it gets rid of the java conflicts. Now that this is all complete, so I'm going to go ahead and type the go command. And there it starts the pre-installation check. So you can clearly see there are no conflicts in this install. Okay, from here it will then continue asking for the various CDs, so I'm going to speed up the video in order to save some time when showing this. Okay, this concludes the install. I'm now going to type exit. And there it starts to re quick start the ELF files.
okay, the installation is now complete, so it's asking me if I want to restart the system, so I'm going to say yes. I'm now at the login menu, so I'm going to log in as root. And this is what I get for my work. Thanks for watching.